Hey guys, it's Mr. Beckwith again. Um, this video is specifically for those of you that either missed the conductors and insulators of electricity lab, or maybe you didn't take as good a lab notes as you needed to, and so you just need a refresher. So what we're going to do is I'm basically going to reenact and, and go through all the things that you did in your lab, okay? So just as a quick refresher, um, I've got my simple circuit here that runs my bell. I'm going to test it and make sure it works. We're good, all right? Um, I've got some materials here, and we're going to go through them one at a time, and we're just going to check and see if they will conduct electricity or if they are an insulator for electricity, okay? Now, I don't have the lab sheet right in front of me, so I may go a little bit out of order, um, but we're just going to go through, and we're going to make a quick prediction, um, and then go from there. So I've got plastic here first, all right? Um, now, plastic is everywhere. There's plastic coating on these wires, and so if I touch the plastic with plastic, hmm, that's probably a pretty good hint um, of what I think the plastic's going to do. Then I've got this wood craft stick here. Um, yeah, I wonder what the wood's going to do. Now, as I'm going through these, you should be writing your predictions in your notes, all right? You should have already written the vocabulary terms down. You should have already set up your table before you ever even pushed play. If you haven't done that, go back, fill out the vocabulary, get it in your notes first, create your data table, set up your data table, make your predictions, write down what each of these things is made of, what material it's made of, then push play. If you haven't done that already, push pause right now, do it right now, come back, okay? All right, moving along, we've got this piece of aluminum foil here, all right? Aluminum foil, aluminum's a metal, wink, wink, hint, hint, all right? Glass marble. Hmm, glass. Interesting. I'll have to wait and see on that. Hopefully it won't roll away while I'm sitting here. Uh, cork. And as we know, cork is made of wood. It's a very light type of wood. All right, we've got some yarn here made of cotton. Got some string here also made of cotton. I'm going to do those right at one after the other so we can see the effect of both. Um, got a copper penny here. Copper's a little bit crusty, but I think that'll be okay. It's a little bit dirty, but I think we'll be fine. And then we've got an iron nail, and we've got a steel nut and bolt. Now, <clears throat> just as a quick little, so a, an easy way to tell iron from steel or iron and steel from aluminum. This actually may be more aluminum than steel. I think the nut's probably steel. Um, iron will rust very easily. So if you look at this nail, you can actually see it's got some rust on it. And so it's probably a lot more iron in it. Um, whereas steel will not rust as easily. Steel will still rust if you leave it out. Um, but it's gonna, it's not gonna rust as easily. If metal's real shiny like this, like this one, this actually may have more aluminum in it even than steel. But we're gonna call it a steel nut and bolt. All right, now I've got a few other things we're going to look at. Um, also got a wool sock. This is just kind of an extra just because I wanted to see wanted you to see wool as well. We're going to go through these things there on your lab sheet. Uh, all these things should be on your lab sheet. We're going to go through some extras, and then we're going to talk about humans just a little bit. Um, I'm also going to use my rings uh, to talk about gold and silver. All right, so let's get started. All right, so for each of these, I'm going to hook up my lead to one end. And then with the other end, I'm just going to touch it. Now remember, you don't have to hold this down, because if you do, it's going to take a really long, long buzzer. But I'm just going to touch it, and as you can see, for the plastic spoon, I'm not getting a buzzer. All right, so we can always double check our bell if we're not sure on something. Yep, bell's still working. So I know plastic is not a conductor. All right, plastic is not a conductor of electricity. All right, let's check my wood craft stick. Once again, hook one end, and then the other end you can just touch and the wood is not conducting electricity either. So we know the wood is not a conductor of electricity. All right, aluminum foil. Aluminum, metal, wink, wink, hint, hint. Ooh, hello. Very good, very good. All right, so we know aluminum is a conductor of electricity. Very good. Now the glass marble is a little dicey because this joker likes to roll around. So I'm actually gonna hold this in one hand and hold the lead against it I'm going to try not to shock myself, although there's not much of a current running through this bell, so I shouldn't get shocked, but... Alright, so you can see I've got one of the leads touching the marble here, and I'm going to touch the other lead here to this side. And we see it is not conducting electricity. Glass is not a conductor of electricity. Alright. Now I can't really hook onto my cork here, 
So I'm just going to kind of lay it on its side and hope it doesn't roll away on me. Ooh, trying to roll away now. All right, so I'm going to touch one side, and then I'm going to touch the other. Nope. So my cork, which is also a type of wood, not a conductor of electricity. All right, let's try my yarn here. So I'm going to hook, and then I'm going to touch this in. Cotton string, yarn, not conductors of electricity. I'll go ahead and do the cotton string just to be 100% sure. Nope, touching my leads and still nothing. Now, at some point in your own lab, if you get an opportunity to make this up, if this is happening and you're not getting a lot of buzzing, it's okay every once in a while to go, you know, I wonder if this thing's still working. Oh, still working. That is totally okay. All right, to my copper penny. All right, so I'm going to hook one in here. And then I'm just going to touch the other one. Ooh. So copper is a conductor of electricity. Absolutely. Iron nail. I'm going to hook one end. Touch the other. Iron nail is a conductor of electricity. Iron nail is a conductor of electricity. All right. Steel nut and bolt. We already said this is probably more aluminum than steel, but... Oh. All right, so steel is a conductor of electricity. And remember, steel is an alloy made of iron. So if iron is a conductor and steel is an alloy made out of it, probably going to get the same result. All right, let's check our wool sock here. All right, so I'm going to clip one end, and then I'm just going to touch another. And it honestly does not matter where I touch on the wool sock because wool is not a conductor of electricity. It is an insulator. All right, now let's try my ring here. Let's try my gold ring. So... Um, we talked about in class the other day that uh, the gold that we have in our jewelry, that none of it is 100% pure because gold is such a soft metal that all the gold jewelry we have is an alloy that has some other metals mixed in just to make the gold a little bit sturdier. But there is gold in this. And as you can see, the gold is causing the bell to go off. All right. Now... My ring is actually, it's a white gold, but white gold is actually just gold with a silver coating on the outside, so we're going to check and see how silver does. All right, silver is, silver is also a conductor of electricity. All right, so we're good. So hopefully you took good notes as we we're going. I went through that a little bit quick, but the great thing about these videos is you can always just put your finger on there and back up that little red dot as far back as you need to. So we went through all these materials. Make sure you write down conductor or insulator in your data table. No yeses and nos, no C's or I's. Don't get lazy on me, okay? Write those words out. Get in the habit of using those words. That's how you remember them, okay? All right, I'm going to clear these things off and put them back in my bucket and clear them off. And while I'm doing that, I want to tell you a story. So when I was uh, in middle school, I lived um, in the area close to where I live now. Um, and fairly large city, not huge, but pretty big, pretty good sized city. Um, and so I came from a pretty good sized middle school. And when I moved, uh, I moved out to West Texas to a little town called McCamey. Now McCamey at the time had a population of about 2,000. I had 2,000 people in my middle school alone at least. So this was a bit of a shock to me. And my parents wanted me to get to know some of the, the kids that I was going to be going to school with and hanging out with, because um, honestly, there weren't a lot of options there. And so they, uh, they were actually at a camp, and so they, my parents took me out to this camp to visit with these kids. And when I first got out there, my first interaction with these students, with these kids that were my age, I was going to spend the, the next four years of my life with, um, they were playing a game. They had found an electric fence, and if you don't know what an electric fence is, it's just a wire with an electric current running through it. And it's designed to keep animals in a certain area without building a big fence. And it can be moved around and, and it, it can be more of a temporary thing. Um, well, this electric fence, for whatever reason, was just out in the middle of this campground. <clears throat> and about 30 feet away, there was a metal pole that they were, that was in use as, as a clothesline. But it was a metal pole going into the ground. And what these guys had figured out is if you're wearing shoes, the bottom of your shoes are typically made of an insulating material like rubber or leather or something like that, or plastic. And so if you held the metal, or excuse me, if you held the electric fence and you were wearing those shoes, you wouldn't get a shock. But if you touched the grass or you touched the ground, it'd shock you. Well, then they figured out 
if they made a human chain and they held hands and somebody grabbed the pole at one end while another person was holding the electric fence, everybody in the line would get shocked. So my first impression of these 10 or 15 people that I was going to be uh, spending the majority of my teenage years with in high school was 15 people, one holding this electric fence, and then one person at the end going, Hey guys, you ready? And they're going, Yeah, 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 do it, do it, do it. And then that person grabbing the pole, and as you can guess, everybody in the line going, Duh! Now, if they had done this once and thought, Man, this is really stupid, and quit, that would have been one thing. But they kept on doing it over and over and over again, and I just thought to myself, Wow, this is who I get to hang out with for the next four years of my life. So... Actually, they were pretty cool people, and if you're a teenager, that probably sounds like something fun, but um, if you're watching this video and you think, man, those people are kind of dumb, you're probably right. But the other thing I learned that day that maybe I hadn't really thought of before is that humans are, we conduct electricity. Now, we don't conduct electricity well. That's why if you get a lot of electricity flowing through you, it shocks you, or worse, you start smoking or it even cooks you. So it's not healthy for us, but we will conduct electricity. Now the question is why? Why do we conduct electricity? What in our bodies, what in our body chemistry allows us to conduct electricity? Okay, let's think about that for a second. Now, humans, about 70% or so of our body is made up of water. So maybe, just maybe, it's the water in our bodies. Right? That would make sense, right? I mean, we're made mostly of water. So, let's give our bell a try here and see if it'll work in this water. I'm gonna, actually, I'm gonna attach these leads, whoa! I'm gonna attach these leads to some paper clips, and I'll explain why in a few minutes. Um, but I'm gonna attach these leads to some paper clips. I'm gonna adjust here so I can get a good angle, and you guys can kind of see what's going on. So, I'm gonna put the leads in the water. Now, I just show you, the paper clip's touching, absolutely, because the paper clips are made of metal. So, let's put them in the water and see what happens. All right, so nothing's happening there. So, maybe not the water. Now, humans are also pretty salty. Now, have you ever noticed that when you sweat, especially if you sweat a lot and, like, maybe you get it in your mouth or whatever, it's real salty, right? It has a real salty taste. Well, hey, I happen to have some salt here. Humans are very salty, all right? So maybe it's the salt. All right, I'm going to make sure I get all the water off here. Make sure I dry it off a little bit. just use my hands. Now, let's check and make sure that my... It's still good. Okay, so let's try the salt. Maybe it was the salt. Hmm. Okay. So, maybe not necessarily the salt. Hmm. Now, what do we know about salt and water? Well, we talked about last week that salt dissolves in water. So, the salt in our bodies is actually dissolved into the water in our bodies. So, let's see what happens. When I mix the salt... In the water. Now I'm going to put a lot in there. In fact, I'm going to put more in there than the water is actually capable of dissolving, but it's going to be pretty close to maxed out. And I'm going to stir it up to make sure as much of it will dissolve as I can. And there's still a little bit floating at the bottom, but I got quite a bit to dissolve in there. All right, let's test this again. Now let me check my bell. Yep, it's still working. All right, let's give this a whirl. Ooh, interesting. All right, I want you to do something for me real quick. All right, now this is going to be a little bit weird because you're watching a video and I'm going to actually ask you to close your eyes. But I want you to close your eyes for a second. Now, if you were in class for this, you know why I'm going to do this. But just play along, okay, especially if you're partnered up with somebody and you're both watching this. Close your eyes and I want you to listen to something for a second, okay? So this is number one. And this is number two. Number one. Number two. Now, if you were cheating, which most of you probably were, you realized that number one was me putting the leads into the salt water. Now, you can tell the strength of the bell. It's not, it's not ringing as loudly or strongly as when I just touch them directly. Or even touch the leads directly. So... What does that tell us? It tells us that this metal is a much better conductor than this salt water. The salt water will conduct. I mean, it will. It's conducting right now. 
but it's not conducting real well. It's conducting well enough for the current to flow through, but not well enough to give me that good, strong ringing that I'm hearing when I just touch metal to metal. All right. So this is also true of our bodies. Humans will conduct electricity, but we don't conduct it real well. And the reason we'll conduct it all is because we have the majority of our body is made of salt water. There's a lot of salt dissolved into our into the liquids, into our blood, into the water in our body. All right. Well, I hope you guys found this interesting. I really love the salt water thing. I think it's really cool. Uh, again, if you are using this video to take notes or to make sure that the notes um, from the conductors and insulators of Electricity Lab are good, make sure you do that. Feel free to rewind and make sure you get all of those notes in there from all the results. All right. All right, guys, have a great day. We'll see you later.